everybody. Hi. We made it. Welcome to Freedom Friday. I'm Serena from Birthing Freedom. And welcome Erin O'Brien. She has been an amazing contributor to life here on Denman Island, where I'm visiting. And she is a local healer, and you've been practicing Zen Shinjutsu for 26 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so I met you way before I had kids, but mm -hmm. I remember you helping me when I was pregnant 13 years ago. Mm -hmm. And you know so much about the body and the energy centers and I'm curious about mm -hmm. what you what inspires you to do this work mm -hmm. and I thought I'd invite you today to share a bit about how people can integrate acupressure for flow in their day-to-day we live in really interesting times where we have to be really creative and take on our health and our well-being in new ways and creative mm -hmm. ways. Mm -hmm. And so what you've been offering for so long, I think, is a really amazing asset to the community. Mm -hmm. And you. yeah, so I'm really excited for you to be here. Excited too. Yeah. It's an interesting new platform you know normally we'd be sitting around here having tea by ourselves and now we've invited that conversation to be much bigger and uh, you know I think it's timely it's really exciting so mm -hmm. thanks for your bravery too yes <laughs> yes yeah. yeah, so um, there's a lot going on with the our, our outside world mm -hmm. and our inside world so inside inner worlds so in terms of Jin Shin Jitsu, would you like to share a bit about how we can harmonize ourselves in our day to day? And I know mm -hmm. for a lot of pregnant people and people who are about to give birth to ideas or projects or to new life, mm -hmm. new babies, um, even outside of this unique time with the COVID-19 pandemic, we have a lot to navigate in our day to day decision making, um, and harmonizing fears and pain and a lot of things that we might just hold on to and not even recognize but these things can manifest through physical mm -hmm. ailments so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you would like to speak to um, how we can uh, harmonize our energy centers and what brought you to this work mm -hmm. okay yeah. thanks so much Serena. I think just right off the biggest key to harmonizing our energy is um, that deeper connection with breath and we see examples of that all over the place with um, the ebb and flow of uh, the tide and you see that all the time with the cycles of the moon and really it's our one way of deeper connection I mean there are so many but one way of deeper connection with our source mm -hmm. is that exhale and in Jin Shin Jitsu, they focus on the exhale as really being that place of building. And really, I mm -hmm. spent like 24 years thinking about exhale as a letting go. Mm -hmm. And I recently went to a training and uh, worked with um, Wayne Hackett, who is just a phenomenal Jin Shin Jitsu um, forefather in North America. And he was talking about the power of the exhale as being the build. So if Jin Shin Jitsu, you focus on the exhale, of course we're going to receive that inhale as our breath, our gift, mm -hmm. right? It's that innate gift that we receive from the Creator, or from the essence of which life comes. And then as we focus on that exhale, we're dropping the shoulders, feeling that exhale, and it really moves from a cascade of energy that's come over the brow. And that exhale begins around the upper chest. And And then we move back up. Mm -hmm. And so what happens there is that in t instead of the attention for our harmonizing to be on the letting go and that allows room for that inhale, the attention actually for harmonizing is in that place of empowerment where that inhale then becomes the exhale. 
So we are taking that energy like a back eddy and drawing our attention to that place of building. And as we bring that new energy through the body, we're filling our cavities and sourcing that mm -hmm. life energy through ourselves and mm -hmm. replenishing, renewing, rebuilding, mm -hmm. grounding through. That it's like filling a cistern from the top. Mm -hmm. The old water, the old energy, the old flow just drains away. Mm -hmm. And it requires no attention. Mm -hmm. And so that really is the most liberating, most empowering, most fantastic revelation that I've had okay. in the last 26 years. Yeah. Is that with that exhale, with that attention on the exhale, we're actually building, we're empowered to take that life gift. Mm -hmm. and to give it back to our bodies, to give mm -hmm. it back to ourselves, to fill our lungs and to just allow that newness, yeah. to just allow the old to go. Yeah. And that that old doesn't require our attention, mm -hmm. that life gift is a gift, it doesn't require our attention. Yeah. Our engagement begins at the exhale when we take yeah. that gift and we build through the body. And I think mm -hmm. that's really, um, it's empowered me so much in the last couple of years to really focus my attention there. So with Jin Shin Jitsu, when I was 19, I was crippled with arthritis and I was um, crippled by fear. You know, I didn't understand what fear was mine and what fear was from society and what fear was ancestral. And I was, um, you know, full of chronic fatigue and I couldn't find my way. And I thought, you know, my family doesn't have the money and the resources mm. to pay for me to get some support. I can't get out the door to work. Mm. I, you know, my relationships are falling away. You know, mm -hmm. my friends are like, you know, what's wrong with you, you hypochondriac. And mm. so I had to find a way to better understand. So I found this incredible friend of mine who since passed away, Catherine Power, and she really brought um, these ancient Japanese traditions into my life and I began to study it and it is a language. And mm -hmm. so you begin to understand the way that our humanness interprets interprets that creator's gift, that yeah. source gift. Yeah. And then we're able to communicate our intentions mm -hmm. for healing and for release of fear and anxiety and all the other emotions, worry, mm -hmm. sadness, that feeling of pushing and trying, yeah. all of that can then drain yeah. away with our intention mm -hmm. because we know better how to communicate with the body. And not only that, we understand more what the body's telling us. Mm -hmm. So I have to say, like, it started from a seed place, mm -hmm. and now it's, you know, it, it's filled my whole life. And mm -hmm. so I understand better how to harmonize my thoughts, mm -hmm. you know, where to go when I feel desperate, you know, like I understand more, mm -hmm. you know, it's not that those feelings don't come, but we have a better way of moving that. Mm -hmm. And I think life in motion, right? Emotion. Yes, right? emotion, movement. Yeah. And that's the piece yeah. of, you know, when we're pregnant, yeah. I mean, you and I both know that there's yeah. nothing more vital and moving, mm -hmm. right? There's no control. Yeah. There's nothing you can do. You're just being taken over. It's incredible. By life. Like you actually literally get juicy. Yeah. <laughs> the juices yeah. are flowing. Yeah. And it reminds me of what you were describing, how with your inhale, we have these mini life cycles. Yes, so our breath yes, has like yes, yes. the beginning and the whisper of like the height and peak, midlife, and mm -hmm. then it turns and then it lets go and then there's mm -hmm. that little seed again. So it's really hard to put, <laughs> to put it into words, mm -hmm. just how we have all these little life cycles and bigger life cycles, life cycles in our relationships mm -hmm. and with our parents and with our children and with colleagues and mm -hmm. um, even just like our passions in life. There's a beginning and then there's a peak and then there's an end. So mm -hmm. And the pain comes in the yeah. resistance to the, the process, resistance. right? Mm -hmm. And I think that oftentimes um, the processes can be painful, uh -huh. but the more we're able to breathe through it, the better we are at trusting in the process, the easier it is to keep moving. Yeah. And that, I remember when I was in labor, I kept thinking, um, I can do anything for three minutes. I can do this, you know? And then the contractions oh, yeah. were like back to back at one point. And mm -hmm. I was like, okay, <laughs> three more minutes. I can do three minutes, you know? So yeah. it just kept being like, even though it was like, you know, you know, transition for me was like very long, yeah. you know, yeah. but it was like three minute beginning, mm -hmm. middle and end, beginning, middle and end, yeah. beginning, middle and end. <laughs> yeah. And it was like, because I recognized that process, mm -hmm. it was like freedom for me. Like I had yeah. stamina, 
right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, and it was because of that deeper understanding of the cycle. And that understanding, do you think that you were describing the communication? Mm -hmm. Did that help you with the understanding? That narrative of that creative power mm -hmm. and listening mm -hmm. to that. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. Knowing you're part of something you're bigger. Part of something. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, somebody said to me, I remember once in the labor process, you know, going into it, you know, pre labor, mm -hmm. they said, at some point, the moment will come that you will have to harness yeah. the goddess, <laughs> you know? And that that moment, it's like everything else mm -hmm. builds to it. And then mm -hmm. when you can get to that place where you're actually in it and there's yeah. nothing left but to breathe, to be your primal mm -hmm. self, mm -hmm. and you know that it's not you anymore, mm -hmm. you know, you've actually had to like step away yeah. and it's your spirit and your muscles and your, you know, instinctual mm -hmm. being mm -hmm. that's connecting with something so much deeper yeah. and everything else that you offer the process is like preparation, right? And then for that moment, you know, we're almost gone, mm. right? And it's like the total surrender. And it's so beautiful because then it's over, you know? <laughs> and, then, and then something and new. And then something new, yeah. right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. And it's a new surrender, as we all know, parenting. Yeah, it's huge. Yeah. 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 So I'm curious how, how you'd like to share this mm -hmm. for others out there watching today. Mm -hmm. um, and just if people... If you have any questions, you could share them here now or contact Erin in her email. But mm -hmm. right now, we were brought together today mm -hmm. um, just to share the benefits. Mm -hmm. um, Real specific stuff so could specific. be useful. Yeah, 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 yeah. not to, you know, <laughs> yeah, everybody probably <laughs> believes and could be sitting around going, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, we agree. Woo! So, um, we, you know, when you contacted me, you said, let's talk about fear and the yes. power of release. And so yeah. I think that that's really... Um, Mm -hmm. And so I think whether you're going into the process and you're setting up your team or you're totally on your own and you're needing to come to terms with that process um, and that, you know, all those feelings that come around when we look around and we're drawing our circle and our circle is small, yeah. you know, and we're needing to draw on that goddess power, that inner wisdom, that deep breath, that exhale, mm -hmm. that letting go, that focusing on what works. And I think no matter what our circumstance is, the mind is not always our friend. And so one of the things with Jin Chin Jutsu that we talk mm -hmm. about is that recognizing it, you know, just understanding with deep compassion for ourselves that our mind is a tool and it's for training, you know. Mm -hmm. And so if we have the intention of releasing fear and releasing other emotions associated with our experience, that really we have to at first take control of that mm -hmm. by saying emotion is moving this is an experience that's a natural experience yeah. it's way bigger than anything I could possibly control mm -hmm. and so there's that surrender to the breath it's a surrender to what is and the releasing of the mind mm -hmm. right? and so because the mind is no longer involved you know mm -hmm. it's like things will come up and things will go and so recognizing the power of the exhale yeah. the power of the letting go and unbuilding you know, the power of the dropping the shoulders. Mary Burmeister, the Japanese-American woman who brought Jin Chin Jitsu from Japan, studied with Master Jo Murai. She was the only woman, I have to say. Wow. And her father brought her, a Japanese man, brought her um, to the teachings of Jiro. And it wasn't until much later that Mary mm -hmm. Burmeister married a man who was American, who was yep. there in Japan because of the war, and moved back. Okay. So she was the only woman who studied mm -hmm. and she um, was able to share with everybody her teachings and I've lost my train of thought a little bit but I'll just go back yeah. to the fear yeah. which is the letting go in the fourth depth of the body yeah. and the fourth depth of the body is the muscle layer and one of the things we need to recognize is that there's relationships between the emotions and between the depths Okay, so the when and, and the depths the of, depth the of the body. So we have surface skin, deep skin, yeah. blood, muscle, bone, uh -huh. right? And then be, um, and before that, you know, there's blood. Blood is the third depth, so between deep skin and, okay. and uh, there's blood and then muscle and then bone. 
but and then that's the five that's the core five oh, that's okay. the body right okay and so then from the core five you extend into the ethereal so we could yes. do jin shin jitsu just off the body and mm -hmm. that's the sixth step and then there's the seventh step and the eighth step wow. and the ninth step wow. and the, we are directly connected in you know in this ancient wisdom mm -hmm. knowing we are deeply and deeply and deeply and deeply and deeply connected yeah. to the source creator yeah. right and so that comes through in an electric movement mm. so we are electric system positive and negative wow. charge and so our hands can be applied on ourselves mm -hmm. or other people mm -hmm. and simply what we're doing is we're moving electricity yes. through the body and mm -hmm. so one of the things we need to understand about fear is that you know, just like in a river, and you talked about the body being a forest, or, you know, and that there are rivers and streams yes. of energy, and, you know, blood, yes. and, you know, other movement places, yes. right? Uh, all of ourselves mm -hmm. are moving. The but lymphatic system. Yes. Because there's so much. So much movement, so much right? Moving. Yes. And so they talk about the layers and how just like in a, in a, in, you know, really in a, in a pentacle, really, it, yes. it describes the balance mm -hmm. of um, energy moving through the system. So we know if we have deep fear, that oftentimes when we release the third depth of the body, which is more anger, uh -huh. that there is room for that fear to move down the river. Okay. And so sometimes when we release the anger, yeah. the fear is no longer an issue because it just moves down the river. Uh -huh. And sometimes to support the movement of fear, we process our sadness. And the fear is here, and the sadness is here down the river. It needs to move down the river, okay. and anger is over here. So it's sadness, uh -huh. anger, and fear, they're all, they're all connected. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. interesting, because I've yeah. learned that over the years of yes. doing holistic fear counseling, that it's like an onion. Yes. The emotions just right under, there could be another yes. emotion. If you're feeling happy, there could actually be anxiety or embarrassment. And all like, of it. Yeah. Exactly. Amazing. So there's all these connections. And so in terms of moving yes, that. Moving, yeah, moving it. Yeah. Moving through the pain or the fear. Exactly. So yeah. one of the things that's really powerful, especially, um, you know, we have to think about what's accessible to a woman who's quite pregnant, yes. right? It's really difficult to get to the feet. Mm -hmm. The feet and the legs are incredibly powerful tools mm -hmm. in terms of opening the pelvis, in terms of moving energy through the whole body. Um, all of our organs are supported by the fingers and also by the toes, mm -hmm. and there's a relationship between the right hand and the left <laughs> foot mm -hmm. and the left hand and the right foot. You know, it's like these are directly connected, these are directly connected. And so there's lots of options for ways of moving energy. I think that in terms of labor, uh -huh. you know, um, there's real significance in terms of opening the pelvis. Yes. Yeah, and, and opening and releasing resistance, right? Yes, and mm -hmm. there's often resistance, but sometimes we don't acknowledge even our resistance, mm -hmm. where vaginal exams have become something that's just normal in the birth room, mm -hmm. but there can be resistance mm -hmm. in the body, even if the mind is saying, okay, this will be beneficial so that I know how dilated I am mm -hmm. and how far I am in the birthing process. Mm -hmm. But um, what if you, a part of you is saying no, mm -hmm. like how, and mm -hmm. oftentimes the vagina is just the last thing that you really want to, like, have in terms of like a stranger or somebody that you don't really know entering. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, you're super vulnerable in that space. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so that was um, something that I think we touched on that mm -hmm. I would love to bring up, which yeah. is that, you know, you're going to choose your most trusted team member mm -hmm. to go in and do your vaginal mm -hmm. exam or to be the one to yeah. catch the baby or to take the light and go right in there yeah. and like, how's it going down yeah. there, right? Yeah. But there's all kinds of other supports. So mm -hmm. um, I'm thinking the little toe specifically yeah. and the big toe specifically okay. during during labor and I think the little toes you know what I've heard is that you know right at the very last 
trimester, mm -hmm. going deeply into the little toes might not be a really super good idea. It's okay. somewhat contraindicated. Yeah. But when you're going into labor and you're ready, mm -hmm. going right into the base of the little toe and working. Like the base. Can I touch your foot? Sure. Yeah. And I think that's really important is always getting permission before yeah. you touch anybody. Mm -hmm. And then one of the things Serena and I, just are you comfortable there? Yeah. One of the things Serena and I were talking about is that it's way different when somebody arrives on the scene, you know, maybe they're invited, maybe mm -hmm. they're not, and they say, hi, I'm here with a solution, I'm going to offer you this tool, and you're like, oh, I don't know what's happening, okay, I guess so, you know, yeah. but if you know what's happening and you're able to say, you know, person over there who I don't know that well, come and hold my little toe and help to stimulate the little toe, so going into the base of the little toe, right, and squeezing, you know, and then going along the outside of the little toe and squeezing and moving that. And what you're going to do is the kidney bladder moves through the little toe, but also gallbladder and liver. So you're supporting the third depth, anger, gallbladder, liver. You're supporting the fourth depth, fear, you know, bladder, kidney, all by stimulating that little toe. And what we're doing here as well is opening up the birthing canal essentially that those kidney bladder and liver gallbladder are going to really support mm -hmm. deeply the opening of those centers and it's also going to assist you in releasing mm -hmm. fear and it's also going to assist you in releasing anger yes. and so you may want to um, scream and cry but really we're not talking about a vocalization so much as just a internal communication mm -hmm. with the body you're saying body dropping the shoulders as somebody's holding this toe. They might not even have to push, you know, maybe they're able to just get their finger in there and just hold it, mm -hmm. you know, and just have a real nice grip. Or they could get the whole foot and go in here and mm -hmm. just hold that little toe. And it's so comforting. And the, the, what we want to do is we want to support the movement of energy down the front of the body. And while we're holding that little toe, there's two fantastic things we can do. The big toe is the one place on the body, it's energy safety lock number seven in Jin Chin Jitsu, but the big toe is the one place in the body that supports both the descending energy and the ascending okay. energy. So it has to do with that build, and it has to do with that revitalization, okay. right? That replenish, that con deeper connection with source, mm -hmm. which we are going to want, yeah. right? So you take your hand, and really it's the index, middle, and ring fingers that are most powerful in terms of making that electrical connection. But you can, you know, get somebody to go in and just grab your little, your big toe. So I've got the little toe, and I've got Serena's big toe, and I'm exhaling myself because the person who's giving it also, the more relaxed they are, the better. And you would be relaxing by exhaling, drawing your attention places in the body that actually feel good. Mm -hmm. Maybe you've got a bottom lip that feels really juicy and sexy oh. and you can't wait to give your whomever a sweet kiss yes. and that's the one part of you that feels uh -huh. good right now. That's where your attention goes. I love that yeah. so much and that's so beneficial during birth because yes. right there are the endorphins that beyond the hormones that are helping you cope with pain. Mm -hmm. There's the juiciness of yes. welcoming creation and you are a powerhouse of awesome. Yes. That warrior goddess you're talking about. Yes. There could be a little whisper in a moment. Yes. To just tune into your own juiciness. Yes. Have your own creative power. Yes. So I love that bottom lip because yes. you, you, yeah, you might want to smooch. You might. <laughs> and especially, you know, if you've got somebody assisting you to move that mm -hmm. fear and that anger that you've been stuck with for the last yeah. 25 minutes and you yeah. thought you were going to explode and you hyperventilate, but instead, yeah. you're remembering to exhale, to drop mm -hmm. the shoulders, to focus on what works, to allow <laughs> for the harmony in the body, mm -hmm. and in that moment, seize it yeah. because you're going to feel better. Awesome. And then you're going to say, hold me, kiss me, feed me, I need yeah. water, oh my goodness, I have this other need, I'm cold, my back hurts, like mm -hmm. all of a sudden, as soon as the fear or the anger or the sadness, whatever it is, starts to move, mm -hmm. everything else becomes more clear, mm -hmm. and it's the holding that prevents us from having that deeper knowing. The holding that prevents us from having, having the deeper knowing. Yes. And it's yeah. the it's the exhale, it's the arrival in this moment. The arrival. Yes. Yes. 
And there are the holistic stages of labor. Yes. Where it's arriving back. Yes. With your baby. Yes. From that place you have to go to for mm -hmm. the physiological flow to happen. Mm -hmm. Where it does feel like a storm. Mm -hmm. And I've held people and without a vaginal exam, I've had this one client who is three centimeters dilated and then within a no, I think she was five centimeters, and within a half an hour, they didn't do a vaginal exam, but she was ready for an epidural, and I held her, and I told her, mm -hmm. you're in the eye of the storm. Yes. Because I could feel it in my bones. Yes. And I knew she was ready to push her baby, but it had been 30 minutes yes. since her last exam, and she was five centimeters, and then within that half an hour, she was at 10 centimeters. Wow. They hadn't checked her until she had this urge to push suddenly mm. there was no time for an epidural and she just welcomed that and she it. she's coming back mm -hmm. with her baby so it's coming Fantastic. back with the flow. in that moment being really present mm -hmm. i mean that's really key to this and that's what yeah. i was saying about the three minutes three minutes three, three minutes, minutes three minutes yeah. it allows me to not think about what happens in six minutes uh -huh. it allows me to stay right here right now i can do this this mm -hmm. breath this breath this mm -hmm. breath this breath and it gets me to the next set of three right mm -hmm. and you just it's uh you know one arrival at a moment yeah. you know? exactly. so i wanted to say that one of the powerful things you can do is once you move from the toe um, you know, stimulating the whole foot, you know, maybe six okay. minutes is good, 20 minutes is ideal. If you could get somebody to really stimulate that little toe and that big toe for 20 minutes, it's going to mm -hmm. assist you in releasing fear, assist in releasing anger, it's going to assist in um, moving that energy down the front of the body, assisting with that re receiving from uh -huh. the earth, right? Yes. You know, you're going to be drawing energy, energetic energy, whether mm -hmm. your foot's on the ground or not through here, up, over, cascading like a waterfall through the face down to the chest where we begin to build. And I think remembering the power of that breath. I mean, you're maybe going to be constricted in terms there's a baby in there, yeah. right? And so there's, you know, more shallow breathing. Mm -hmm. So just remembering the power of the breath. And one of the most essential pieces of that is the mudras that we can do i remember going for a run with you a oh yeah years ago yes. and i was like oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you told me about this is the yes, long one yes this is the long one <laughs> exactly so it's the ring finger um nail on the pad of the thumb and you're just doing that and clear intention with the other fingers and serena and i have run together doing this you know <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know, and uh, yeah. but if you're laying down, they say there's something powerful about the intention of an upward mudra. Mm. And they talk about this as being um, key to the inhale, which is interesting. Mm. So you focus on the exhale, but allow this to assist with the receiving. Okay, assist with the receiving. Yes. So if we look at electrical currents, there's an outlet. Yes. And an inlet. In, yeah, yeah, essentially, okay. yes. And for me, my attention goes always to harmonizing what's working and the exhale. And I recognize that the inhale is a gift. The inhale is a gift. It just happens. And this assists us to, like, put a bow on it, you know, to mm -hmm. fully be ready to receive mm -hmm. the gift. And I think that's one of the things that we have to learn as women. It's like, it's okay to receive and to receive fully, yes. not only from the environment we live in and from the people around us, but from the Creator. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's really cool. And you can, there's all kinds of mudras you can do, but there's other cool ones like bringing the middle fingers down. So you're like this. Yeah. Exactly. And that's just another way of supporting the breath. And there's something about that where if people see you in this stance, mm -hmm. they might not bug you. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> they She's might meditating. Know that you're like in the zone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 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 And there are there are other ones too. Um, that we, we don't have to go into okay. too many complicated and things, but there are so many more things I could share right now. How would you describe this one in terms of like, does mm -hmm. it have a name? I don't know the name of okay. it actually, okay. but I know that the middle fingers are um, related to anger, 
Okay. So it's lung, large intestine, and in addition to that, or no, sorry, liver and liver gallbladder. And gallbladder. Lung, large intestine is something completely different, which would be cool to talk about actually yeah. right now, which is probably sure. why I said it. Yeah. Um, but that's liver, gallbladder, and that each one of these fingers stimulates your organs. So you're bringing extra attention to the releasing of anger, liver, gallbladder, and you are stimulating all of your other energy centers, all of your other organs. Mm. So it's just a overall vitality, you know, by releasing. And liver, um, gallbladder is also the third depth of the body, which is blood. And so blood is so connected to the movement of oxygen, mm -hmm. and it's also connected to the health and well-being of your baby, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And so oxygen and blood, really good one. Yeah. I know we talked a bit about, um, you know, I talked there, um, well actually I didn't talk about that, but the, okay, I want to move on right now yeah. to... Um, the first depth, one of the things about the fear, the releasing of fear, is the fourth depth is a descending energy function. So the fourth depth is the muscle layer, releasing of fear, and just the general function of the fourth depth is to release and to let go. And within the fourth depth, we have ascending and descending energies, but the overall function at a bigger level, bigger scale, is about the letting go. So the one place that also within that wheel of depths that also supports the letting go, the mm -hmm. release, is the first depth of the body, which is worry. Okay. So releasing uh, fear and releasing worry, they're married. Yes. Right? Exhaling, dropping the shoulders. Can you describe why, why we worry? Like mm. Where does worry come from? Oh, that's interesting. Well, you probably okay. know too, but you know, I always think of it as being a combination of things like you know, a com anxiety, yeah. right? So anxiety might stem from unmet needs. And when we yeah. look at how the wheel works, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, spleen is connected to worry and okay. stomach spleen, okay? okay? So stomach is, in, the, in terms of our ability to digest food, that's one thing. Mm -hmm. But stomach function also assists us in being able to digest thought I and see. experience. Right, and when we're not able to fully digest thought and experience, mm. we're going to have an experience of worry. Yes. Right, and oftentimes worry comes before fear. It's like, uh -huh. oh, I'm worried about that. Yes. And then when that need needs not met and that exhale doesn't happen, mm -hmm. then we're going to move into fear okay. because it's the next depth of it's letting go. Okay. Right. And it's interesting when you talk about the lines of communication with creative power, mm -hmm. when we get the lines of communication from society or this narrative that we've inherited maybe in our ancestral mm -hmm. lineage and fear around birth or transition, um, or even of parenting, mm -hmm. like I wonder if that can be digested as a worry where it's not necessarily... 100%, like a, right? Absolutely. If we're not able to let go to let of go, the yes. crap that we're yes. being fed, and then right? It, yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Okay. And, and when, when the truths that we're discovering are in contradiction with the truths that we've been taught, mm -hmm. right? Yes. How do we then digest that? Yeah. It's very complex, yes. right? Yeah. And so, and then we have to maybe disappoint people mm -hmm. and trust uh -huh. and deeper connect. And so in order mm -hmm. to do that, we need to let go. The other organ that's connected with the first depth, which is associated with worry, is an also surface skin. So we can feel hot, we can feel cold, we can get goosebumps, we can get small rashes, we can get weird things that happen mm -hmm. temporarily as okay. we're needing to let go. Things that it manifest, you know, on the outside of the belly. Like sometimes things can get weird yeah. just for a short time, yeah. right? And then it's gone and you're like, mm -hmm. oh, it'll solve and that was no problem. Okay. But oftentimes by putting a bomb or by acknowledging oh, the body, yeah. we're releasing worry mm -hmm. because we know that we're tending. Uh -huh. And so, acknowledging, yes. loving up those parts yes. that are holding, yes. giving that acknowledgement. Hundred percent can address that initial worry. Yes, it's yes. It's, it's 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 the first step. It's not very deep. Yes. and so it's 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 the thing that would happen before fear, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So it's it's I feel you know fairly straightforward to. To soothe worry, uh -huh. you know, we just sort of need to even you focus, doing that. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm focus, focus on the cricket. surface of the skin. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Yeah, which is super mm -hmm. sweet. Yeah, um, but it also makes us 
vulnerable to our environment. Like if we have if we have fabrics that feel shitty, yeah, you know, yeah. or we might feel worried, like, yeah. oh, am I going to get comfortable, you know? Mm-hmm. Or, you know, it, chemicals or things that we don't want around us that mm-hmm. can bring up that feeling of worry, you know? Yeah. And that um, sometimes has to do with control. And so you bring that to the exhale mm-hmm. because the four steps and the first step are the rulers of the exhalation. Mm-hmm. So I want to bring our attention to the next organ that's also involved with the first step, which is the spleen. Okay. And the spleen is so incredibly vital. It's like, mm-hmm. even though it's associated with the first step, which is surface worry, the spleen is like life giving. It's like without the spleen, nothing can happen it's mm. it gives us and sustains all life and mm. um in addition to that it also rule rules the womb i see yes okay can you yeah the spleen so <laughs> yeah, the spleen rules the womb uh-huh. and so it's like the energy of the spleen uh-huh. rules the womb and so the there's a really simple hold that we can okay. do to support the spleen awesome uh-huh and um so the thing that would be really cool is if we go back to the little toe, but I was just making a note here in my book, so yeah. I'm looking here. Yeah. So mm-hmm. if you're hot on your surface skin and you want to support the womb, um, you might put your left hand on your right side. And if you're cold, you might want to put your right hand on your left side. So it's a bit confusing, but what I would say is that it doesn't matter because the body will do what it needs to do. One of the things that we know is that um, it's just real simple, like right rises, Mm -hmm. left lowers. And so you get a sense that if you want to raise your temperature, you use your right hand and if you want to lower your temperature, you use your left hand. So it's going to be a little confusing because we're actually going to be using both hands. Okay. But I'm going to take your, um, let's say that you are hot. Yeah. So I'm going to take your right. That's handy. It's closest to me. Okay. <laughs> so if you're hot, but not that this would matter. Hot or cold is just one add-on. Your body will regulate on its own if you're too hot and somebody holds the, you know, the wrong (laughs) side. The body will figure it out. It's just efficiency. Uh Um, But also, I wanted to say that um, it doesn't just support and regulate temperature. Okay. We are supporting the spleen, which is life giving and ruler of the womb. Ruler of the womb. So it's way bigger. Spleen. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Okay. So this is this is your right. So I got to make sure I get this right. So my left is going to go on your right. Ah. So it's the opposite. So even your left can go on to my right. Yes. That's what it is. Yeah. Okay. And then my own right can go on to my left. Yes, you can do things. <laughs> okay. Don't worry about it. Whatever you do, okay. it's going to work out. It <laughs> would be way too confusing to okay. even care. So <laughs> what you need to know is that Jinchen Jutsu is ancient and there were like a lot of little, you know, people didn't have textbooks. So people in their communities Uh were, you know, learning and they were saying, you know, mama, was that a right or a left? And she'd say, you know, just put your hand on your foot. (laughs) (laughs) Who knows whether they, you know, paid much attention to that. Okay. So what I would say is that the six is right below the ball of the foot. So can you put your foot towards the camera? Sure. Everybody can see my hairy legs. (laughs) They're so beautiful. (laughs) Okay. So there's the ball of the foot. And if you go just below the ball of the foot into the bottom of the arch here. Yeah. And you can move. I'm going to apply oh, some pressure. So Does it feel good? Okay. <laughs> so right into the ball or below the ball into the arch. And if you want to move slightly to the center of the foot, that's cool too. But anywhere just off center, up into the ball, but below the ball like that. And then this hand, the other hand is going to go onto the little toe. So, I'm going to make sure, just for sake, I'm doing it wrong because of the camera. I was looking at them instead of my mm-hmm. instructions. So, I'm going to go right, her right foot, my left hand, into the ball, mm-hmm. and then my right hand into the little toe. And right now, that process is going to raise Serena's temperature, but really, the focus of what we want to do, I can come back down with you. Oh, that's okay. Okay. <laughs> the focus of what we want to do is support the spleen and release worry and enhance and harmonize the function of the womb. And so six in here, 
think we're going to just focus on the energy safety locks and the ball of the foot there, just below the ball of the foot. Six is balance. Okay. And the little toe supports the release of fear <laughs> and the release of anger. Yeah, that's the fourth and the third depth of the body. But the combination between six, which is balance, and the little toe releasing fear and anger is the dissolve of worry. Mm. That's also related to spleen. Who does not need that? Oh, I know. <laughs> and so, oh. what I would say is that there's simple things. These are all things that other people can do for you. And I'm going to yes. talk about things that um, you can do on yourself. Because that's really the mm. most important thing. All of the flows can be adapted for self-care and can be adapted to your ability. So if you um, have a limb or don't have a limb, you can still treat. You can, you know, if, you, if you're missing a digit or a finger, yes, you know, yes. like a whole hand yes. or whatever, um, you still treat the body as though the hand were there. Okay. So you go to where the hand would be and you hold it. I was going to ask, some people don't have a womb. Yes. Who used to have a womb. You still treat the womb. like they might have a womb. Yes. They don't have a womb. Absolutely. And so, yeah. You still treat the womb. Okay. Yeah. yeah. The womb exists energetically. Yes. And it stays forever. Yes. 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 And the same with a, a toe or a foot uh -huh. or a leg yeah. or an arm. And I actually have mm. done a number of treatments on amputees. Wow. And have felt, you know, because I hold yeah. these until I feel an energetic pulse. Yeah. And, you know, it's not essential that you feel the energetic mm -hmm, pulse, but mm -hmm. with more practice you do. Oh, yeah. And anywhere between six minutes and 36 minutes. So mm -hmm. I like doing, you know, six minutes, six times a day. Like just give myself just as though you were a smoker or something. Yeah. You okay. know, you just give yourself okay. like six <laughs> gin gin jitsus a day. You just lay down for wow. six minutes or whatever. Incredible. Yeah. It's so good. It wow. was like life changing. Yeah. That is incredible. What yeah. a good idea. Six minutes, six times a day. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or 20 minutes at one go would be like, kind of a minimum for like real benefit. So I'm going to think about that down. Is yeah. that okay? See? Good. <laughs> oh! <laughs> yeah. But, um, so this is great. I can feel the blood pulse moving through there, which is so nice. I mean, that's really what you want. But when I was working on the amputees, I could actually get the blood pulse. Like it wasn't there. Uh -huh. And then it was. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Incredible. So like, and I'm working on a limb yes. that's down that's here down that's there. not there. Right there. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but I want to say yes. in terms of self-care, I don't know how much time we have here. We have a bit of time, maybe yeah. 15 minutes yeah. or something. Um, there's so many things. Okay, so I, I want to talk about the eights. And the eights are something that we can hold on ourselves, but also it's incredible for pain. Okay. So I'm going to share um, the eight in combination with the 16, which is incredible for labor pain. Okay. Um, yeah, so low 8 and 16 and also low 8 are also 16 and 5, so both are really good for pain, so I think I'll just share. So 8 is, um, if you go, uh, here's the leg, so the knee, and this is the outside of my leg, so if you go up the outside of the leg to the top, there's um, a nodule at the top of the bone there before it becomes the crease. So you go up the outside of the muscle till you find the top of the bone, <laughs> right in there. Um, you're gonna find, you know, kind of a lumpy bone head, and that's just right there. And then on me, it's quite painful, the lumpy bone head <laughs> there. And so what I want to do is go to the top of that bone and then just slide off into the meaty, muscly part right there, and that's an eight. And you can actually feel it like. That lower part of the leg, if my hinge is there, this is where I am. And I'm in the meat, not on the bone, but just off the bone. And for me, it's quite painful, so you might find that it's tender. I don't know. Yeah, I don't find mine's too tender. That's good. But I'm going to do it on both sides. Okay. So I'm going to go to the outside, follow along to the top of the bone, the out outer bone. This is going to be the hinge, so I'm below the hinge, and I go okay. off into the meat. And, uh, yeah, mine are sore. So I also have very tight hips, so that's, you know, possibly why mine are sore. So I'm dropping the shoulders every time, exhaling. 
<laughs> and I'm holding my eight. And it, the last trimester, um, you know, the last weeks before giving birth, I wouldn't recommend going heavily into the eight. If you're going to okay. hold it, hold it really gently, and you're just relaxing the pelvis. But when you're ready to give birth, um, this is a place where you can really apply a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. And if you've just tried this and applied pressure, like hold your thumbs, exhale, there's no worry. Mm -hmm. You'll be fine. It's going to be great. <laughs> it's just that if you're going to do this as a regular practice, mm -hmm. um, you might want to just do this in the, you know, when you're ready to give birth and you're waiting for your baby, yes. you know, this is a great way to spend your morning, like uh -huh. with your herbal tea and just hold these. <laughs> 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 yeah. <That's in> law. <laughs> <laughs> and this is something generally you can do. And if you're laying down with pillows propped all around you, like I was, and like your <laughs> knees like this, because you've got pillows between them, it's really awesome because you can actually get comfy and then snuggle your lower limbs and hold that exhale throughout the shoulders and just get as comfortable and relaxed. And imagine your baby coming through yeah. the birth canal effortlessly. Mm -hmm. And what this does is it opens the pelvic girdle. Uh huh. So, and the pelvic girdle, it's described in so many different ways around the world, but it is like a basket, like a bowl that's yes. holding so okay. much of your yes. tendons and muscles connected to these vital organs. Yes. And then there's a relief. There's so much. Yes. Whispers of anxiety or pain. Yes. Pain or fear, like can be held there. That can be held there. Yeah. So, if you're pressing these points yeah. below here, yeah, at the top of that bone, at the top of your bone, into the muscle, into the muscle, mm -hmm. visualizing your baby, yes, can be an affirming action. Like That's right. This is a welcoming feeling. That's right. And so, doing it might bring up some feelings. So the yes. the breath, would you say, is yes. something you could always come back to? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for bringing that up because. I think we talked a bit about how sadness yeah. is below the stream or upstream essentially actually mm -hmm. from fear and anger uh -huh. and so you know the eights are more connected more deeply with that place okay. right and so I think that it's really intuitive that you brought that up because what we're wanting to do is release worry we're moving into the releasing of sadness and mm -hmm. as we do that releasing of sadness yeah. we're actually increasing the pressure for the fear and the anger to release uh -huh. so if we do this okay. and we actually are filled with fear yes then that means that all that means it doesn't mean that something's wrong uh -huh. all it means is that we're releasing the energy that's upstream yes. And oh, so okay. the water or the energetic flow, it's not water, but in the analogy, yes. the energetic flow is now increasing pressure. It would be like if there were locks mm -hmm. on the river mm -hmm. and we like pull a lock uh, yes. and the lock fills, uh -huh. right? That section. To make room for something to else. To make room for something else and a new emotion is going to emerge yes. and it will flow uh -huh. and it will be happy. But the thing about that yes. is that as that pressure increases at the fear place, you know, we may find yeah. that that is filled. And so the next mm -hmm. tool I'm going to share okay. is the fingers. So just in the same way that we talked about the feet, the hands are right here and easily accessible. And whether we have digits or hands, you can still work it. So one real quick analogy is stop, worry, fast. Worry, F-A-S-T. So stop, worry, fast. And so worry, fear, anger, sadness, and grief. And this last little finger is pretense or try to. So if we find we're banging around the house trying to get all this shit done and nobody's helping us and we're getting mad about mm -hmm. it and we're just pushing, 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 pushing because I need everything to be right and I'm going to be smiling when my kids walk in the door but all I want to do is break dishes, that's this one. Yeah, that one. <laughs> and so hey that's baby. <laughs> <laughs> that one, that little finger is pretense, or pretense. When you, where you where you smile instead of cry, or whatever it is, or when you push, when you're pushing, pushing, uh -huh. pushing, right? And that's got a pounding energy to it, uh -huh. right? 
So that one's a really powerful one. But anyhow, if you end up moving the energy, opening the pelvic girdle, and you know that it's you know somewhat related to sadness and mm -hmm. you're moving that energy and all of a sudden you're feeling more fearful yeah. because it's downstream mm -hmm. as you open the mm -hmm. lock you need to get more of that so then we exhale we think no problem <sighs> dropping the shoulders everything's going to be okay i'm deeply connected i know i am i know i am i know i am you know even <laughs> though i feel really vulnerable uh -huh. whatever it is and then we exhale and we recognize the build and we take that gift that we've been given and we bring it into all those places that we really mm. need it. If you're doing this right now, you're probably feeling it. <laughs> yeah. And then we recognize that with each breath. We're feeling better and better. <laughs> Six breaths is great. 36, 36 is even better. That's six. And so then we can recognize that if we're still feeling an emotion, we have a tool to fix it. Mm -hmm. And so we go to that place of recognition. And this really is a way of directly communicating mm -hmm. your intention with the body. And it took me probably 13 years to believe it, but it's true. Yeah. <laughs> so every single <laughs> energy function runs through the fingers. And mm -hmm. so, you know, both the right and the left. You just have a right and a left side, but the same organs are represented. Yeah. Okay, so, and it depends on what you're feeling. Um, yeah, and you can use that energy idea, left leads, left lowers. You know, if you want to lead the energy down the front of the body, if you want to rise mm -hmm. the energy up the back, the you back. might use your right. Mm -hmm. So just recognizing, you know, use your intuition where you want to be, mm -hmm. left lowers, right rises. Mm -hmm. You know, you can put your right hand on something yeah. that's really painful and it will just something about the right um, seals it and nourishes it something about mm. the left leads that energy out okay to leave leave out leave, leave, leave left to leave. left to leave or left to lower mm -hmm. and if you recognize that energy moving down the front mm -hmm. is lowering so if you want to somebody's having a lot of anxiety and you want to move energy from your head to the ground if you want to ground mm. you take your right hand and you nourish that head mm. yeah it could be at the base of your skull yeah. it could be at your neck it could be at your shoulder it could be at your third eye it could be at your crown wherever with your right hand because you're taking your right hand and you're nurturing and then you're taking your left hand wherever you end up finding a resting place so i'm going to cradle the back of my head <sighs> dropping the shoulders exhaling and then that left hand i can pick any place on the lower front section of my body to tell my body to take the energy from my head, my spinning thought, and bring it down the front of the body. So right now I'm going to go to my pubic bone, and I'm just going to rest my hand on my belly button essentially, on my umbilicus, and then my fingers down by the pubic bone, and I'm just going to exhale, and bring that energy that's stuck in my shoulders or neck tension, or crown or my head my thoughts are spinning sometimes I'll hold my crown and my mm. third eye at the same time bringing it down exhale and really all of this just works to empower ourselves so we don't need drugs or even other people to support us to a place of harmonizing and connection with source and that reminder of conscious breath that this is the tool we have mm -hmm. left leading down the front right soothing blessed be and then sometimes mm -hmm. just as a as a final closure because i know that energy moves down the front of the body i want to leave my left hand on the front because left leads and i want to bring the energy left leading down the front and one of the things you and i did together when you were putting your pelvis back together when you had really opened in a good way yeah. was then you and I talked about bringing 13 years ago your right hand you know palm down just slide it gently under your tailbone yes. I did that last week and did it clunked yes I was like I've been waiting yes <laughs> and so that's yeah. the most beautiful way to uh -huh. end a session mm -hmm. for yourself is to have this yes. hand you know um, heel of the hand on the umbilicus 
mm-hmm. and you know then just let your fingers drop down towards your pubic bone mm-hmm. and then yeah right hand on your mm-hmm. um, tailbone and then you know really your whole sacrum is yeah. cradled yeah you know and that's so fantastic oh, and yeah. you know as you're closing and coming back to your womanhood mm-hmm. after your birthing experience that's a beautiful thing to do oh yeah yeah it's amazing like that we can do this on our own Mm -hmm. and we talked earlier a bit Erin about how the tradition of healing around the world like for doulas we used to just innately be around each other yeah and support each other in the sisterhood Mm -hmm. of support Mm -hmm. and in the 80s doulas became more of a Mm -hmm. profession because we Mm -hmm. had to fill this gap Mm -hmm. where we were more disconnected Mm -hmm. um from our community, from our relatives who supported us traditionally. So right. can you speak to that about how we can heal ourselves mm-hmm. and how with COVID-19 and all these changes that you're, how you're supporting people mm. today? Thank you for bringing that up because I think that that's one of the things that came up for me. In March, we were really sick as a yeah. family and mm-hmm. we, we just, everybody got sick and mm-hmm. we don't know what we got because we couldn't get tested and it was horrible. And it was terrifying. Oh, yeah. And my mom spent a lot of time on the phone, like trying to get yeah. help. Like, mm-hmm. what does this mean? How do we know? You know, yeah. how can we? And she's really vulnerable. Yeah. And what we found was that there was no help. Mm-hmm. And not only were there no solutions, but nobody would come mm-hmm. and help us. Wow. And there was no testing. And what they would say to us is, if you can still talk and you are not gasping for air, then we will not be able to offer you any supports and if you do need supports the only supports we have for you are like intubation like you know breathing supports and so really quickly i realized that i was the only one Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to care for my whole family and that um we needed to get really on top Mm -hmm. of self-care because i was not going to be able to give treatments to everybody Mm -hmm. day and night Mm -hmm around the clock because they were feeling panicky and Mm -hmm, fearful mm -hmm. and scarcity and couldn't breathe and you know whatever so recognizing that we needed to do self-care so everybody got on a program of holding their fingers or doing the mudras Mm -hmm. the lung mudra was incredible for for moving energy it's the ring finger and the thumb and this one my mom would have moments where she couldn't breathe and I'd say you know have you been doing your mudras and she'd say oh no okay and it would just help her like in so many ways it would give her a tool right so recognizing that these are ancient tools and Mm -hmm. that we have lost our our historical language yeah right we have lost our traditions Mm -hmm. we have become incredibly dependent on western medicine Mm -hmm. that at this point in many ways has failed us right and so this brings us to the next thing and so when we got better um, I started thinking, okay, how could I share this with other people who are feeling desperate? And that's when I started the YouTube channel. And yeah. so they're just somewhere between like two and a half minutes and yeah. 16 minutes and six minutes, most yeah. of them. And you can go there and just do self-care and they have oh, different yeah. topics. And anybody who wants a topic to yeah. be discussed can just oh, message yeah. me just and I'll just it. do one. And it's incredible. Your channel is amazing. Oh, it's so great. It's like so it's casual me and so weird. Much <laughs> I, I know. I was like, this is so perfect because it just... I did the headache one this morning when you posted it, and I was like, this mm. is so beautiful. I didn't have a headache or anything, mm-hmm. but it was just, like, so insightful. How did you call it? The um, Maintain energy and holds? sustain, this Maintain one. Maintain and sustain. sustain. And that the most headaches originate from the gut. Yeah, And so we exactly. recognize we're really up here all the yeah. time, and lots of times people are holding their heads uh-huh. and rocking back and forth. But what we want to do is bring the energy down. Bring the down. energy down, totally. And we want to clear yeah. the gut because that's uh-huh. where the flow, if you imagine those locks, right? Yes, Everything's yes. backed up yes. here. And so we have to... Yeah. And then... Exactly. You know? So... Please yeah. go subscribe yeah, cool. to her channel. <laughs> well, it's so if you awesome. just if, whether you subscribe or so, not, but yeah. the, the benefit to, to going there and subscribing yeah. is that you have access to the library. Yeah. And so otherwise, if you just put in core five acupressure, stuff will come up, which is great. But it's more random. Mm-hmm. So if you mm-hmm. want something that's specific to your yeah. need, that all you need to do, I think it's free to subscribe. Yeah, I actually only <laughs> got the internet two months ago. <laughs> I know this is odd, but like I live in a place with no internet, so we had to get the satellite guy, and it was just a nightmare. <laughs> But anyway, um, and so that's all. And so I take yeah. them on my phone, and it's really uh, low tech, yeah, and I'm in so my great. truck or whatever, you know. <laughs> like it's really, yeah. but, but it you comes know. down to the DIY care. Yes, 
and yeah, yes. I like Tara as a healer. Yes, and, and you can do it yourself, you which is yourself. what you're saying, yeah. which I don't want to lose track of your yeah. question yeah. And, yeah. A, and the yeah. time, but just minutes. simply that um, because we've lost connection to community and even some of our mm -hmm. you know immediate family yeah. and we're more yeah. isolated, yeah. that not only do we need to know what we need and what our body's telling us, mm -hmm. we need to know how to address those things ourselves and then immediately following that, recognizing yeah. that no, there's no limit to the self-care, mm -hmm. but that if we can ask other people to do it for us. So I'll say to myself, okay, I'm going to hold my thumb because I'm worried I'm going to run through all 10 fingers because I know I want an overall energetic boost. Mm -hmm. I'm going to finish that by holding my pubic bone with my left hand, running that energy down the front. I'm mm -hmm. going to hold my tailbone, open my coccyx. You know, that's the energy grand center station for the whole body, that connection between the tailbone and the pubic bone. And so we're just opening and flowing. Grand central station. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. The womb <laughs> center. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, and just having said that, that there's no limit to, um, you know, how powerful it is when we can um, know what our body's telling us know what it is we intend and then know the language mm -hmm. to actually yeah. say i hear you and could you please do this mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like it, it's really that simple it's uh -huh. like you know i'll say asking for help asking for help and asking your body for help yeah. and asking the creator for help i mean essentially uh -huh. those are languages that were that came through sitting mm -hmm. in the cave, right? Yeah. I mean, it's yeah, like, oh, yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah. for sure. Yeah, Definitely. yeah. So there's so much I want to share, but yeah, I, oh, I, I know we have like two minutes, but I want to share yeah. one more hold. Okay. Um, which is really good, which is really good for labor pain and delivery pain specifically. Perfect. So it takes us into the eight. Okay. And so we went into that upper eight. Well, let's use this one. So we went into this. This is the outside of Serena's leg, going up like this to the top of that outer bone here. Um, I'm just going to feel around a bit. Yeah. <laughs> so I go into that bone. There's the bone on the outside below the crease in the knee. I'm going to go underneath the bone, sort of into the fleshy part. And now I'm going to go down, 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 oh, yeah. down into that low eight. So the low eight is anywhere between about, you know, three or inches below the knee like all the way down to the ankle like all the way through amazing here so you want to go in there and then the 16 oh yeah i feel that 16 yeah the, the, this is the low eight this whole okay. thing's the low eight so i'm right here low 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 on the leg okay on this and this is bladder kidney line mm -hmm. so this is all fourth step this is all releasing okay. here okay so you go in here and then the 16 is on the same side so this is the outside and I'm going to go into, so there's the ankle. I'm going to go into this circular area below the ankle. So I'm feeling the lower eight right now. Yeah, and, and so this is the 16. Okay. And so what I'm going to do there is I'm just going to hold it. Hmm. And this is actually interesting. I'm just checking my notes here because sometimes I get dyslexic about left on left or right on right. But this is how you do it. So your... So this, as you can tell, you know, it doesn't matter how long you're doing it. Sometimes left and right get confused. And it really, you have to understand that if you mix them up, it really doesn't matter. Like mm -hmm. that the body will m make it work. But in terms of efficiency, what they're saying in my text here as I look down, because I wrote a note on it, because I don't do this labor pain one all the time, is that your left arm connects with Serena's left leg. So it's arm and leg. Yeah. And then the right... Um, is the opposite. So right now I have my left arm on Serena's left leg and then it's my right hand on just below the ankle. Mm -hmm. So it's arm and leg are the same. So left leg, left arm. And okay. so it's anywhere from here all left the way left. down. And if it were me and I had somebody who was in pain in labor, I would start at the eight. And this is something that opens the cervix. This uh, helps eight. directly, oh yeah, that helps by opening the pelvic girdle. Okay. And then this left, uh, or sorry, this low eight as you move from the eight yeah. down the leg. Yeah. And you could spend like a minute or more in yeah. each position all the way down okay. the leg. Okay. 
and or you could just find a tender spot if the woman says yeah 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 you know you could comb the ache yeah. first and figure out where it's sore okay or you can feel a point of tension along that line that outer line and not only is it going to release fear because this is the bladder kidney line goes down to the little toe but it is um it's directly beneficial for pain okay. really yeah and then you go down here and then if you end up down here hey hey there's a little toe <laughs> and you can get a little toe big toe you know with your support so this would be a really cool thing to teach uh -huh. your birthing coach yes um or now serena knows it if she's at your birth yeah 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 share this with your peeps <laughs> with anybody even the nurse even somebody you haven't met like you were yeah. saying if you feel comfortable there's something about that waist down. Yes, yes. And we were going to talk just, we have a couple minutes, just about how you've had to integrate this new way of connecting with people. Oh, right. Where yeah. you work with them feet down yeah. because of the physical distancing. Yeah, and then yeah. You, you, they wear a mask and then you wear yeah. a mask, but also it gives them an opportunity where mm -hmm. there's four hands instead of two. So they're working up here and you're guiding them. That's right. And you're... Work in the lower work limb. In the lower limb. Which yes. Is pretty awesome. Which is amazing because there's we can work every organ, we can work the shoulders, head and neck, we can work every aspect of the body from essentially the groin down. Okay. And everybody else can work this yeah. part in tandem because they're married. Mm -hmm. You know, there's connections right and left, above and below, right? Okay. Thanks awesome. for having me. Thank Have you fun. so much, Erin. Yeah. 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 And so people can connect with you. Her email is just below here. And um, yeah, so five yeah. core acupressure. Core five. Core five. <laughs> Those are the depths. The first five. <laughs> core five. Contained in the body. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so you are available. You are offering treatments. And I'm offering treatments. Distance. Yeah. I'm doing the outdoor um, clinic. Oh, yes. And it's a bit weather dependent. I yeah. have an indoor clinic, but I, I've been trying to do it, and it feels a little bit too close. Okay. Um, so, yeah, you and I are probably the closest I've been to anybody okay. in a really long time. And so we're, you know, comfortable yeah. with that because we talked about health and wellness, yeah. and we're doing well, and our family yeah. circles are mm -hmm. well. But I think just in terms of the larger group of people, mm -hmm. um, you know, just ask that people come and that they're yeah. feeling healthy yeah. and that they wear a mask and I wear a mask and that it's weather dependent, but mm -hmm. I do have an outdoor clinic space. Okay. And um, I, w I will at some point develop something that people can do online yes. above and beyond the self care. But awesome. And there's a peer mentorship. Do you want to talk yeah, about that? Um, oh, you're just in the birthing phase. Yeah, right well, now? we're developing it. It's, it's an interesting piece where people can get together and um, run a, do a Jin Jitsu. It's more like a yes. bigger life coaching piece yes. that yes. includes self care and Jin Jitsu mm -hmm. in it. Okay. And the I vision is that between two and ten people mm -hmm. join in the mm -hmm. program together yes. and that assists with affordability to make things more accessible which okay. is I think feminizing the yes. process yes. like I, there's really weird stuff happening right now where people are corporating out and like uh -huh. making programs super inaccessible to mm -hmm. people you know there's some stuff I wanted to do that I just could never afford and yeah. I thought like what do you mean I can't buy this and then share it with all my friends like yeah. you know it's mm -hmm. so I've been trying to figure out ways to do that yeah. and then by yeah. doing that together um, people can then create the peer mentorship okay. and peer coaching awesome. and um, what was the other thing you were talking about which I sounded beautiful the peer counseling yeah the holistic counseling I will yeah. be starting off with you that peer counseling for that. community yeah yeah I learned from Nicole Shapiro yes and yeah I'll be integrating that in the fall and over the winter so my program will include <laughs> your peer <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. yeah. Uh, tell me more about yeah. that yeah great well thanks everybody for listening and thanks yeah Talk ground and grow <laughs> keep ground breathing and grow. yay thanks yeah. Bye. See ya.